Hi guys, James here. Thanks for coming to watch and today we're discussing three amps that I would love to play uh, through and also perhaps to own as well. I, uh, I flick between deciding whether amps or guitars are sort of more important um, but I think in the end I always end up thinking that it's all a sort of mesh of um, guitar, uh, amp, pedal, plectrum, cable, um, speaker and player. <laughs> so obviously in my lineup uh, that would be the weakest part. But let's just go straight into it. Today these are three amps that I'd love to play uh, starting with the Fender 68 Custom Vibralux Reverb. Um, I've got to be honest all of these 68 sort of design silver face Fenders are, I mean, really are exciting to me. This is for me the epitome of the tone that I'm after. I started playing a Strat, so those Strat tones are probably sort of more ingrained in me than other sorts. Um, and so, you know, Strat and Fender amp, not that other guitars don't make beautiful sounds out of it too, but just that particular mix is, is very exciting. And my first um, sort of more serious amp was a Hot Rod Deluxe, which I've got to be honest, I've always been a little bit disappointed with just because you have to, it's so loud, to get anything out of it is so loud. I couldn't afford an attenuator and also 15 years ago I mean I think attenuators weren't sort of that common amongst just sort of home guitar players um, with the Oxbox and, and other the Captor um, X coming out you know it's become more common um, but the this love of Fender amps sort of led me into buying my Tone King and uh, that's the Tone King Sky King and I wanted an amp that could do it all as my first really serious amp so I had a box AC I've got a box AC 15 and a Fender Hot Rod Deluxe. Those were sort of my beginner. I mean, they're serious amps, but you know, my sort of beginnings in the amp tube amp world. And then the Tone King Sky King, because it has two channels, both with inbuilt great attenuators, really amazing attenuation, that mean I can play it anywhere, anytime. But also because it really has three major tones in there from Fender Silver and Blackface to champ sort of uh, grit, um, you know, tweed grit, and then sort of bit more martial plexi uh, on the lead channel as you, as you take the mid bite up. And so really that amp is just fantastic and it's such high quality, it's so well made and the tone controls and everything are so sensitive that it's just an incredible amp. Um, but that doesn't mean I won't be collecting more eventually. So this particular amp, the Vibralux, I love uh, vibrato. Um, I don't think it should be called that in an amp. Tremolo, uh, but Fender, I think they, they have their Tremolo bar and their Vibro Lux amp. Anyway, um, I think all amps should have Tremolo in. The Tone King does, and sometimes I just get lost in that wall of sound that comes with that. And you can, I mean, it can be very indulgent, a bit sort of shoegazing and you know, you have to rein it back sometimes. So <laughs> this amp would also fulfill that need in me to have that in the amp, but it also just has that glassy, big headroom sort of thing going on. It's also gonna be a good pedal, pedal platform. These Fender amps always are. And uh, it has two channels. It has a custom channel uh, and it has a vintage channel. Um, so I'd love to play around with that. That's really exciting to me. So, you know, Possibly that would be, if I buy another amp, that would be the next one. Okay, on to number two. Uh, this is a complete change in many ways because <laughs> the sort of Marshall 87 vintage reissue sort of plexi type amp is uh, what well, would be my first foray into Marshall. Uh, my first ever amp when I was 10 was my parents gave me a very small one of those practice one, probably one watt amps. I mean, it's, it's really junk, but when you start, you don't want to spend more than, I think that's probably cost them less than a hundred pounds back then in 1996 or seven. Um, and so, you know, I'm very grateful to them. That they, they bought that, but it, you know, you, you couldn't play that seriously. So I've never owned a real Marshall amp. This one, um, I don't know if they're still making it. It says it's out of stock, but I love the idea of one of these Marshall heads. Uh, this is the 50 watt reissue. I think there is a 30 watt plexi reissue that would also interest me. And why? Well, 
first of all, the Hendrix side of me wants a Marshall amp. Um, he got some incredible tones out of that, 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 that line of amps. Secondly, this would fulfill my, I, I want um, like a basement type amp and the first Marshalls were based on the, the, the basement circuit. And from what I hear, they've got a lot of headroom, but they have, it's different clean tone to the Fender and it's got a bit more bite to it. Um, I think it's very dynamic. So you can really um, intonate and, and use your dynamics really clearly with your, with your picking hand. And I mean, frankly, as a piece of furniture, it's a very good looking thing to me. Um, so I want to buy my first Marshall amp at some point soon. I don't know if I would go for the Fender first or the Marshall, but to be honest, it's, uh, it's not a difficult time, is it, choosing? It's a good, fun sort of debate to be had about which is which. I always find the inputs really confusing on these Marshall heads. And I'd have to learn why there are so many inputs, what you can do with them. Apparently there's some tricks to bring out different tones. So that would be pretty fun if I get this. I don't have a cabinet. So I would be plugging this in through, I'm getting the cap, the Torpedo Captor X. So I think I can plug this in through there to get the cab simulation. So that would be good, a good start. Um, and watch this space, I think, when it comes to Marshall. Right, try and keep this as short as possible. Here we go. This is the, the pinnacle at the moment. You know, Dumble amps are completely, you know, you can't buy a Ferrari 250 GTO. They go for $60 million. Well, Dumble is the equivalent of amps, isn't it? With $200,000 price tags these days. And if one comes on the market, it looks like John Mayer buys it anyway. So Two Rock is possibly the closest thing you're going to get. Um, when I bought my Tone King Sky King, which was around 2,850 quid, and it had inbuilt attenuation, and those at Iron Man attenuators sell for 800 pounds separately, so I, I considered it two purchases. Uh, I was also looking at the Two Rock Classic Reverb, and at the time, Peach Guitars had this incredible sort of tan leather head and cabinet and it was like six and a half grand and I'd lined up some finance to buy it. I thought I'm going to dive straight in here and get the be all amp that I never need to buy another amp. But really when I ended up being realistic about it, there were two thoughts crossing my mind. I'm not a good enough player yet to warrant really even my tone King, possibly not even the Marshalls and Fenders of this world, you know, uh, a hot rod deluxe would do me, but I want to improve and I want that aspiration. Um, and secondly, it wasn't ever going to be the last amp I buy, whether it's a six and a half grand uh, amp or a two grand amp or a thousand pound amp. I know the way I would collect guitars and amps. Um, I think that's what, what a lot of us in this in this sort of hobby. I don't, I don't really like calling it a hobby. It feels like more than that. But um, yeah, we always end up with too much equipment. So spending six and a half grand at the offset before I've even got good at playing um, would be silly. So I didn't do that. It wasn't this 100 watt one I was looking at. It was the 4020. But from what I've been, or what I've seen in my research, um, again, Mick from that pedal show has the two rock. And I think, I think he's got the 100. He might have the 50 anyway. But not just him, um, Schofield and uh, yeah. Is it Matt Schofield? He's a great guitar player. I might have his name wrong. Sorry for that. Um, he plays through that and he was saying how the 100 watt head just sounds way better than the 50. So since they're all similar price, 150, 40, 20, it's worth, uh, yeah, you can see it on here. In fact, that combo, I'd much rather buy the, the 100 watt head uh, and then get a cabinet rather than spending 500 quid more, more on the 40, 20 um, with the quality of attenuators out these days. But yeah, this... This whole two rock thing, it's so aspirational. It's so flipping expensive. <laughs> but yeah, there we go. Sorry, Matt Schofield, it says here on, on the uh, on the page. Um, it's something I think if you're really seriously into clean tone and reverb and that Fender thing and that Dumble thing, and you can ever possibly afford it, uh, it's, you're going to want it, aren't you? But I'm going to work my way there. Uh, it, if I buy more amps, when I buy more amps, 
the two rock will probably be about five or six along but this is one I need to go and play first so I'll probably make my way over to Peach Guitars at some point. All right so I hope you enjoyed this little dive into what amps I'd like to play. Uh, if this video is uh, in, in popular then I'll, I'll make some more of these. Um, I'm going to do it about other types of gear and things as well. So let me know what amps you'd love to play through or if you've played through these three amps let me know what they're like, whether they're worth uh, spending the money on and um, if you like this sort of content please subscribe to the channel check out my Kemper profile of the week series um, and I also do sort of guitar reviews, uh, pedal sort of deep dive into a single pedal where I go through all the tones with different guitars so check those out and uh, hopefully see you next time and give this video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it cheers <laughs>